No, get back lizard people. Get. Oh. oh, wow. I was only dreaming. Hey, where am I? Hey, I'm on a bus. I must be on a trip. Too much. I wonder what kind of mind sucking hallucinogens I took before I left. Okay, I just have to examine all available data and feed it into my head. Okay, oh, a newspaper, wonderful. 1983, oh boy. Time warp. Oh well, at least the 70s are over. What's this? Ronald Reagan is president? Oh no, I am hallucinating here. The thought police will be derailing this train of thought momentarily. I know. I gotta figure out what kind of drugs I'm on, then I can deal with this. Oh, wow. Hands are coming from the luggage rack above me. Mescaline rum banana smoothies. Oh, no, wait. The seat in front of me is melting. Okay, then it's either purple microdot or some very, very fine window pane acid. Or some kind of Drano. I should start leaving myself little notes before I mount expeditions into chemical land. <laughs> well, the bus is real, I think. But that lizard there is a very bad side effect of too much PCP-drenched Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> oh, wow. Rivers of purple ooze. Spider people with striped head. Oh, wait. I'm not tripping. I'm not even on a bus. It's... creature that is almost totally extinct is the Montreal head office. <laughs> Once these powerful creatures of the financial jungle were too numerous to count until they were forced out of Montreal by the encroachment of Bill 101. Unable to adapt, the Montreal head offices stampeded in great herds to the greener pastures in Toronto. As the Montreal head offices migrated into new grazing land, the parasites that feed off of them followed. The parasites in double-breasted coats and blown dry plumage can be recognized by their distinctive call. Hey there, come over. <laughs> the Montreal landscape is now an elephant's graveyard of concrete and steel skeletons. So wildlife experts in the PQ are artificially stocking these empty caverns with the hardier species of the American branch office. Hey, friend, lots of great French restaurants in this town. For more information on the Montreal head office and its close relatives, the Crown Corporation, and the government bailed out company, write Sun Life, Toronto. <laughs> Keep your head up, rookie. These domestic disputes are dangerous. Right, head up. What else should I do, partner? Oh, well, first thing is, don't call me partner. Okay, rookie? Yeah, right. I have to share a squad car with you for due days. That's it. Okay. Okay, if things get rough for you, rookie, ask me. Right, I'll ask you. Police, open up! What the hell took you? You call the cops, you bum! Uh, oh. Hey! Hey, stop that, lady! That crazy broad's trying to kill me! I got a right to my opinions, Harry! All right! That's enough. Okay, what's your name? Harry Lofthouse. And you're Mrs. Lofthouse? Don't remind me. I ought to crack his skull open. This broad is crazy. Now put a lid on it, you... I'll handle this, rookie. Sorry. Where do you work, mister? Work? He's a bum. A bum. I'm dean of religious studies at the university. <laughs> and you're a housewife, ma'am? <laughs> she don't do nothing around this oh, dump. shut up, Harry. Uh, I'm a professor of physics. Professor. <laughs> okay, now, what's the fight about? She says that the universe is infinitely determinate. You and all your free will crap over. I'd rather have one commandment than all the lousy cyclotrons in the Lawrence Livermore lab. The universe is finite. 
Harry, oh, Wait, 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 wait now. <laughs> well, what do we do, partner? I mean, okay. I mean, Dave. Okay, we split them up, rookie. Uh -huh. uh, calm them down. Okay. You stay with her. Right. Sir, would you step into the kitchen with me? Well, she ain't got no right saying God's not existent. <laughs> yes, sir. His damn holier-than-thou attitude just <laughs> drives me nuts. Yes, he seems very religious. He's a zealot. Blind faith, you know. He comes home late at night so blissed out from praying. He don't pay me no attention. I'm a scientist. I got needs. Oh. So his head's in the clouds, is it? <laughs> He's such a fundamentalist, I could scream. Theory of creation. He ain't got no proof, but oh no, he won't admit it. You know, I used to love him. Love is hard to explain, isn't it? What's that supposed to mean, cop? <laughs> well, it seems that you physicists can measure some things, but can you measure love? No. Look, I ain't atheistic, but... I got a right to be agnostic. Hell, maybe there is a God. Right, let me talk to my partner. I mean, the other officer. Dave? Well? I just calmed down, but we can't do much else here. I got an idea. Sir, could, could you come here for a minute? Yeah, what is it? You know, sir, I'd uh, hate to see this come to court. Court? Yeah, it might be hard to defend everything in the Bible in front of lawyers and oh, experts. Now, come on, listen, you know, the Bible's allegorical. But that bitch denies God. That's funny. Your wife told me she's agnostic. Rhoda said that. Yes, sir. Yes, she did, sir. Hey, Rhoda. You know, the Bible is full of knowledge, but not necessarily facts. You mean that, Harry? Yeah. Well, I ain't got nothing against defining morality. Oh, Rhoda. What have we been fighting over? Oh, Harry. Oh. Forgive me, my Sure. If you'll excuse us, we'll be going. Well, I hope they manage to talk it out. Nice work in there. You really grasped the issues. You're going to be an okay cop, partner. Thanks. When danger abounds and people can't sit up straight. When life makes less sense than a Super Tramp album cover. People call for one man. Mr. Canoehead. Mr. Canoehead. <laughs> Battler of evil, defender of good, brother of Ted. That's me! The story of Mr. Canoehead is so incredible, only Mormons would believe it. <laughs> it all began 15 years ago on a tramp steamer bound for Morocco. And then, again, five years ago in a laboratory in the wastelands of Toronto. And again the other night in my motel room at midnight. And finally, one day in Algonquin Park. Well, it's time to get out of the portage, Ward. Ah, uh, yeah, right, Fred. Oh. Ooh, look at that. Sounds like a storm's coming up. Yeah, yeah, look out. Uh, I'll get the canoe. You carry the packs. Right. I got him. Oh, it's starting to rain. You're lucky you're under that canoe. I'm going to get soaked to the skin out here. I can't hear you under the canoe. Yeah! Fred, I've been hit by lightning. Yeah, what about me? I'm getting soaked out here. Hey, he ain't got the canoe off my head. Uh, uh, well, well, I can't ward it. The aluminum's welded right to your head. Oh, my God. I'm a canoe head. And so begins the exciting saga of Mr. Canoe Head. Next episode, Mr. Canoe Head buys a hat. Summertime. Ah, uh, sitting back, relaxing, scratching yourself. Ah. Uh. Until pests show up. Mosquitoes, black flies, Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> you need bug off house and garden grenade. Just pull the pin and toss. 
and tiny shrapnel gets bugs dead or very badly wounded. Medic! Medic! Help! Help! Then it takes two more bugs to carry the wounded away, something we learned in Vietnam. Bug off repellent with deadly butyl triethyl polyferric permanganate in the handy grenade. Oh dear, mosquitoes. Bug off house and garden grenade is so effective it has been banned by the Geneva Convention, new from Roquefort Labs. Are you feeling sad? Thinking of ending it all? Then why not give me a call? I'm Roland Grit, and this is Suicide Watch. I care. I really do. Suicide Watch is brought to you by Manfred's, makers of Manfred's Tube of Lard. The easy-to-spread sandwich topping. You just squeeze and eat and squeeze again. A soul in distress is calling us now. Suicide Watch, you're on the air, friend. Hi, Roland. Glad I caught you in. Don't do it, friend. Come again? It's just not worth it. Right. Well, anyways, the reason I called, I was just sitting here in my favorite chair listening to your little show, and I started reminiscing about a pup I owned as a little lad. Well, childhood memories can be traumatic. Well, that pup had the darndest habit of chewing my dad's ties. Ties? No, no. Don't take a tie and hang yourself. Don't kick your favorite chair over and swing to end your misery. Oh, doggies, you're way off base there, Roland. You're not going to commit suicide? Oh, oh, heck no, I'm just strolling down memory boulevard. Well, this line is for people in distress. You know, I believe that dog was part spent. Sorry, friends. If any of you were trying to get through so I could help you through a tough time, please give me a call now. I care. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> suicide watch. You're on the air. Sorry, Roland, we were cut off there. <laughs> you know, I notice since you're not getting any of your usual depressing characters, you might enjoy hearing an anecdote about my old dog, Fluffy. I don't give a damn about your dog. Huh, that's what Dad would say when Fluffy would chew up one of his best cravats. Would you get off the line? Dad never said that. Look, I'm here to save lives. Uh-huh. To give a hope. Uh-huh. To show people the way. But first, this word from Manfred's. Uh-oh, Daddy's cooking tonight. Don't worry, Sally. Daddy's making a meal so simple that even Daddy can make it. Thanks to Manfred's new tube of lard. Neat! I just squeeze out a strip of lard on your plate, and you dig in. Uh. Licorice lard, my favorite. And here's a glass of Manfred's peanut oil beverage. Yum! Now cholesterol is an important part of every meal. Manfred's tube of lard is greasy good. Oh, why not slurp big lumps of big fat goo? It's Manfred's taste just like a tube of big fat chud. I then pour a cup of peanut oil into... It's Manfred's. It's good. Roland Griff back again. Waiting for a down-and-out caller. There must be someone out there slashing their wrists. I mean, other than that jerk with the dog. Suicide Watch, you're on the air. Hello again, Will you get, Padre. Get off my airways. Now, wait, wait, Roland, don't hang up. I'm going to kill myself. You are? Oh, you know it. No one wants to listen to my heartwarming anecdotes about old Fluffy. I'm, I'm going to end it all by overdosing on butyl triethyl polyferric permanganate. No. <laughs> don't do that, friend. Oh, you want to hear my story? Well, I, I... Well, that old dog was one for sneaking off with a tie and giving it a good old chaw. But, you know, it was never an old tie. Nope. <laughs> Darned if he didn't prefer one of my dad's best. Excuse me, there's the music. I have to sign off now. Oh, no problem. I'll hold the line. We can talk all day if you want. Good. <laughs> this is Roland Grit for Suicide Watch. Suicide Watch is brought to you by Manfred's, makers of Manfred Tube of Lard. In mint, butterscotch, and regular plain pig. (laughs) 
Pizza Romero. I'd like to order a large pizza. Do you deliver? Uh, depends. What's the address? The Space Shuttle. <laughs> the Space Shuttle. That's uh, the discotheque on the Jane Street? No, in space. We're orbiting the Earth, the Space Shuttle Columbia. Sorry, no deliveries past the Dufferin Street. <laughs> but our orbit passes directly overhead of you. You're uh, gonna pay a big delivery charge. That's A-OK. -okay. It's Nassau's money. We'd like a large with everything on it. Oh, just a second. Ben Carpenter doesn't want anchovy or butyl triethyl polyferric permanganate. And uh, what do you want to drink? Anything but tang. <laughs> Right, be there in a half an hour. Roger, over and out. Okay, so we got a delivery. One large, non chovy or butyl into space. My feet, it's low on gas. No, I, I know. We get a garbage can from the back. Murray, you feed it with our strongest garlic sauce. Sal, you oh. add the hot peppers, yeah. make a good fuel. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Come on, Marie, okay, hurry up. Okay, okay, I'll strap the bread sticks to the side for boosters. Okay, Sal. <laughs> Give me pizza. Yeah, here. Oh, and your helmet from your Vespa scooter. Watch, the stock's broken. Okay. okay. And here's the crucifix for the top of the can. Right. Okay. One small step for a man. One large non chovy for space shuttle. I've got him on radar, Ben. He's closing. Roger. Roger. Prepare for link up. Prepare for link up. We have link up. Open door. Door open. Pressurizing. Pizza. How much is that? Two point six million. Uh, Ben, can you cover that? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, and here's a coupon for one million off on your next order. Thanks a lot. All right, food from Earth. No more sucking goop out of a tube. All right. Well... You know, Jim, they should have uh, used a heat shield or thermal tiles on that garbage tin they brought. Why is that, Ben? Pizza's cold. Ah. Oh. Makes him blind, slime of leech to melt his mind. Wing of bat and claw of cat. Stir them all into the vat. Tongue of crow, fur of shrew. Round up snake with stomach blue. And butyl triethyl polyferric promanganate. <laughs> now you taste this fetid swirling goop. Sip this vile butrescent soup. Oh, <laughs> all right, here I go. <laughs> now before the devil's brother, raise the chalice, taste the oven. It bubbles well indeed. <laughs> it is much stronger, sisters. This is the one we shall use. Lift up the card. Pepsi, I didn't believe I'd have had the Pepsi. <laughs> When trouble is underfoot. When danger is underhand. When criminals are underweight. People call for one man. Ted. Or his brother, Mr. Canoehead. <laughs> Mr. Canoehead. A man with an aluminum canoe spot welded to his cranium by a freak electrical storm. After his accident, Mr. Canoehead tried to return to regular life at his old job at the insurance firm. Uh, uh, hi, Stella. You're late. <laughs> By the way, you have a canoe welded to your head. How did it happen? Well, I was portaging through Algonquin Park. No, I mean, how did it happen? You were late. Oh. Oh, my, my head wouldn't fit in the elevator. And, and I had to portage up all 70 flights. Well, moor yourself at your desk and get to work on the Kilmore account. Right, Stella. Hello, Shark Giggle and Gary. Oh, damn, my paddles won't fit in my briefcase. 
Ward, it's for you. Uh, thanks. Ow! Oh, that's the wrong phone, Ward. What? No, don't turn your head. The canoe swings around. Ah! Oops, sorry. No problem, Ward. You're fired. And so Mr. Canoehead was thrown out into the world to search for success. Next week, Mr. Canoehead goes gunnel bobbing. I'm a black widow spider who's lonely and shy. Waiting on my web for an eight-legged guy I need a mail Cause my life is so quiet And when I find him I'll uh, go off my diet You'll always eat the one you love A male black widow who is willing you always eat the one you love A good man's hard to find but oh so filling I long to find a guy with his own web and 14 eyes I shake my thorax just like Raquel Welch I show him a good time before his untimely demise And I'll remember him later when I belch no tears and no goodbyes, no promises or lies, cause no guy lives to tell that I have kissed him. We drink and dance and flirt and then he becomes dessert. I tell you girls, I found the perfect system. You always eat the one you love. After you've got him in the mood You always eat the one you love A male black widow spider Who's been chewed and chewed and chewed and chewed And you gotta eat the one you love You can't get hurt if you rip him apart Oh no, I always eat the one I love And no guy Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to Frantic Times, conceived, written, and performed by the Frantics. Paul Chattel, Dan Redican, Rick Green, and Peter Wildman. Special guest this week was Meg Ruffman. Sound effects by Kathy Perry. Production staff was Mike Burness and Brian Dodds. Uh, techni- uh, pr- uh, production assistant was Deb Coffin. And Mr. Milligan was the producer of this whole shenanigans here tonight at the beautiful Blue Rock Room at the Ontario College of Arts. I did it! Yeah.